Welcome to the Getting Started series. This is the first video where we're going to cover some core features of DVC. Things like how to add data sets and models to DVC tracking, push and pull them to and from cloud storage, and use Git to access previous versions of our project. So if you've never used DVC before, this is the right place to start. So let's jump in. First thing we're going to do in our brand new directory is initialize Git and then initialize DVC. Assuming that you have DVC installed on your system, it should be as simple as this one command. We're going to create a data directory and we're going to use a function called DVC get to grab a data set from a data registry that we're hosting and bring it to our local machine. So this is, you know, it's cool if you don't know too much about DVC get, you can kind of think of it as a wrapper on something like wget or curl for uh, getting something off the internet on our machine and it's special for DVC repositories. So now we've got inside our data directory, we have a new file called data.xml, um, 36 megabytes, voila. All right, so now that we've got the data, we're going to add it to DVC tracking. And the way that we do it is kind of similar to Git syntax for adding a file. You're going to do dvc add data, data.xml. And as soon as we do this, dvc is going to instruct us to run these git commands. git add data dot git ignore and data dot xml dot dvc. Okay, so these are two new files that were generated when we ran dvc add. Um, and I'll commit them really quickly. And now I'll show you what's in those files. So if we go into our data directory, um, if we print out the contents of data.xml.dvc, we'll see that it's a lightweight text file that contains this you know, big, long, mysterious number, as well as a path. And so this will come into play later. Um, but basically what this is doing is providing us a lightweight meta file, something that is linked to our data in a meaningful way, um, but isn't itself the data file, but we can version this data.xml.dvc file with Git. So at this point, we've got a data set that's being tracked by DVC. But the data set lives on my computer, and I want to push it into my own remote storage. So to do that, we're going to add a DVC remote. Um, so I'm going to do this with Google Drive because I think Google Drive is one of the simplest ones to set up if you're a complete beginner. Um, so let's go ahead and do DVC remote add dot D, and the D flag is for default, and we're going to call this storage and the syntax will be G Drive. And now I'm going to go over to my actual Google Drive account and I'm going to create something called, well, I'll just call it remote. It doesn't matter. This is a pretty ordinary file. I'll go into the remote and I'm going to grab this ID right here. I'll copy that and I'm gonna add it right here. So this is my command for adding this Google Drive folder as my DVC remote. I'll run that. And now let's git commit. Um, specifically, we're going to commit my DVC config file to save that we have added this bit of storage. Okay, and now we're going to do something cool. We're going to do DVC push. Okay. It's giving us this authentication. The first time you um, are pushing to a Google Drive account, it will ask you to do this. So what you can do is go to a new tab. You can enter this and follow these instructions. Copy the code, paste the verification code here, and we're done. Okay, we're authenticated, and now we'll see that inside my remote, we've got a new file appearing. And you won't recognize the name of it, but that's intentional. Um, so the name has changed, but I assure you, your file is still in there. So data, data.xml is being pushed into this newly weirdly addressed folder, um, but it's going to be on our Google Drive. It's safe, that's great. 
Okay, all done. So we've uploaded the file and you can see from the fact that it took a little bit of time that you know it's kind of a larger file and that's part of why we don't want this file to be in our GitHub repository. We want to put it in a DVC repository. But because we've got this special data.xml.dvc file, this is going to go into my GitHub repository and that is going to help us point to where this file is in our DVC repository, my Google Drive. So we're keeping it connected to my overall Git tracked project, but the data itself is not Git tracked. Um, and you can confirm that by looking at the, um, the .git ignore file that we generated. There we go. See, we're git ignoring our data.xml file. Cool. Okay, so we can push data to the cloud, um, but let's try pulling it. So let's say that I have removed, uh, let's do this. What if we don't have this anymore? And I'm also going to do something called removing my DVC cache because DVC is a little bit smart about helping you not avoid duplicating any data that you might have had downloaded recently. So I'm clearing my cache, I'm clearing out my data file, and now I don't have it anymore, but I can use DVC pull, and that is going to download a new copy of the data set onto my local computer. So now we can push and we can pull to remote storage. Okay, so now we're going to do something really cool. We're going to try changing our data set and then we're going to use DVC and Git to see how we can move forward and backward in time with different versions of a data set. So if you remember where we've got this data directory and I'm going to do kind of just a, an artificial change in my data. I'm going to double the data set. So we're going to do a copy and I'm just going to concatenate the data set. Okay, so now we can verify, let's see. Okay, so our data set before, if you remember, was 36 megabytes and now it is 72. So we've doubled the size of the data set. So now I'm going to do DVC add again. All right, we've added it and we will follow the instruction to git add. And what we're doing is when we made this change, our .dvc file also changed. And so we're going to git add that file to track the change. And now I can git commit. And let's do a DVC push. So now we're pushing our latest version of the data set into cloud storage. And you can confirm that that is happening that now when we look in our repository, there's two of these files. So we have two different versions of our data set in cloud storage. And again, it is okay that the names of those files in cloud storage do not look like what you're expecting. That's something that, you know, DVC helps you connect your human readable name to that. There are ways to browse what's in your DVC repository. Um, we have things like DVC list. Um, so check out the docs for more on that. Okay, and this is gonna take a second to upload because of it's a pretty big file. Again, not something that you'd wanna be pushing into your Git repository. All right, all done. Now we're gonna do a switch, okay? So we've had two different versions of our data set in the past. Um, and if we look in our git commit log, git log online, we can see that we've had a few versions, huh? Seems like I committed that twice. Okay, whatever. Um, yes, yeah, so we have, we updated the data set here. All right, so to get this, we can do a git checkout of a previous version. Um, we could either go into here, we could grab the SHA, this ID here, um, and do git checkout with that, or we can use an abstraction. I'm gonna do git checkout head, uh, like so. So I'm saying check out the previous version of this file. And note, we're not checking out the previous version of data.xml, we're checking out the previous version of the DVC file because Git is tracking the .dvc file. We've done that, and as soon as we have run this Git checkout, then we can run DVC checkout. Cool, and that has modified data.xml. Uh, data and let's verify 
And boom, we're back to our 36 megabyte version. So we've done it. We have changed the data set and moved backward in time. And now I can do a commit should I want to keep this. Um, and because of we've already saved this version of the data set in DVC, we don't have to do another DVC add. So you might be realizing that DVC is technically not a version control system. Um, what you might be noticing here is that Git is doing the version controlling and DVC is helping us extend Git version control to files that we wanna keep outside of Git, um, things like a big data set. So the VC of DVC is not strictly true. And neither is data, really, because of even though I'm showing you this with a data set, it works with any file type. There is nothing really special about data. You can do this with models, any kind of binary. Um, it's, it's something that's useful in machine learning, but it's not specific at all to data. And a lot of people do get the value of DVC with models. Um, so data version control, not strictly true. <laughs> You know, just just so you know, you know, it's very difficult to name these things, um, but just be aware. So we've seen that there are some parts of our project that are getting Git tracked and others that are getting DVC tracked. So I, I kind of want to drive this home by showing you what a Git repository will look like for this project. So we've got our DVC repository, which is our Google Drive, and we're also going to create a Git repository. And I will make that a GitHub project repository. So I will call this DVC basics and I'm going to make it public, create new repository. And then it's going to give me some instructions to add my project to this repository. So copy that, put it here. Okay. And it's going to do a push. And now when I go to my repository on GitHub, we'll see a couple of files. We've got our data folder and we've got our .dvc file that contains an address for our data set where it is in cloud storage is essentially what this, this secret code is here. Um, as well as things like our DVC config file that tells us where our storage is, um, but it doesn't contain the data set itself. So the data set itself is going to cloud storage. Everything else, including these DVC meta files is going to our Git repository which is GitHub here. And DVC is going to help us coordinate connecting these two parts, the DVC remote and Google Cloud and our uh, GitHub repository so that we can have Git tracking on our project and not keep the data set in the GitHub repository. Now that we've learned how to track data sets and models with DVC and version them with Git, the next question is how to share those files across projects and teams. So head over to our next video and we will talk about that.